The board set two questions. They've got about, they had about 13 or 14 regions, each supporting roughly 100 or so people. How do we evaluate and compare these regions? And how do we know our strategy, which has been good so far, continues to be successful? Remember this thing about learning and growth? It's about continue. Management set me a quite different question. We've got a very clear culture. And we want a way of managing performance consistent with our culture. And their culture was loose tight, they called it. Tight in the sense that they had to make sure they did regulatory things right. But loose in they really trusted their senior management. Except where they maybe needed to step in and something would go wrong and fix it. And they said for the regions, for our regional directors and the people that their services they manage, you've got to absolutely make sure that this is useful to them. It's not an overhead, it becomes part of their job. Nothing difficult then. <laughs> a lot of people think balance scorecards, lots of measures, da 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 da. Can I just say, if you use the expression a balance scorecard for a management team, and a set of balance scorecards for an organisation, you now see why you don't need more than about 20, 24 measures for the management team, though they may have other measures lower down in the organisation. Does that make sense? Keep that idea in your head, because that helps you manage the scope and stops it all running away. Then you have sensible exception level running, yeah? We had a whole day helping educate the board on how to do this and tackle it. Help, we also had a context piece. By the way, you know, these are quite different regions. How do I compare them? I'm going to explain the context. When I explain the context, these people have three contracts, these have none. This is a brand new management team, these aren't. Then, I'm in a position to understand <coughs> the strategy for that region and how much gap they can go. So here's the general region strategy. Here's my assessment of it from my, me as an RD. And actually, I'm good at this bit and you're good at that bit. Oh, let's have a conversation. Hey, you're good over there. You're doing technology where you don't have to have someone stay up all night. You can have a sensor in a pillow and if somebody moves their head, that sets off an alarm so I then know to get up. Gosh, I can go to sleep. That saves X amount of money in a service and improves it. Didn't think of that. Conversation. Now notice how learning and growth appears at two levels, because this is the regional learning and growth, and this is how centrally the organisations support all of the regions to modernise. Yeah? So there's two drivers. How do you, as a regional director, affect the piece of it that you are dealing with? And what help can I get from the centre? During development, we had conversations amongst the management team to design a strategy map, Settled down after about three or four months. We had conversations between the regional directors, and I've told you some of those stories. And again, obviously, because I mean, at one point I presented that strategy map to 70 of them, even when it was a draft. And they were nicking it off the desk. Oh, can we do business planning with this? We had the regional directors discussing it with their teams. We didn't even touch that, but we just let them do it. Because that was encouraging them, if they owned it, to have that conversation. So they could then sell it to their team. Sell it wasn't the right word. Let's talk about it. Oh, wow, bam, you know, back out. And then we took it up to board level. And that's just during design. We carried it through to implementation. So now what we've got are the regional directors. We rolled out quickly to 13, and then they took over another company, so they have another five, ten regions. Um, and one of the directors said, you know what? Having the balance scorecard, that, that tool that they had, was crucial in helping the new regions, they weren't really regions in the old sense, appreciate what we tried to give them as a whole. Because it also gave us a quick assessment tool. So there's conversations within a region and between regional directors. Amongst their teams, we had spontaneous scorecards breaking out here. They were picking up, taking parts of it away, taking the strategy map, going into a service, and suddenly there'd be a couple of dozen service scorecards appearing. Now, it's strategy maps rather than scorecards. Sorry, strategy maps, which they were then looking at. And then they were just popping back up again. 
they're actually getting away from the client stuff and we're trying to manage this. I mean, they actually loved it because that's good, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. We had a conversations amongst the management team and between the RDs, and then the regional directors would turn it forward. Indicators, what measures, what quality, and what not. Then you can set a level of ambition. I'm using that carefully. It's not a target. It's not a forecast. It's an ambition. I, as regional director, would really like to be at this place. It's not some buddy making a forecast and turning it into a target. Note the distinction. I make a forecast, I call, call it to be a target. Yeah? I'm setting a level of ambition, I'm explaining how I'm going to do it. Here's the process in the regional learning and growth. These are the things we have to do well and what we have to develop as a region. Now, each of the regions have the same map. Each of the regional directors picked the level at which they were at. Actually, they went and discussed it with their teams. And one came back and said, you know what? My team have decided to score everything at least two points below where I think they are because they're more ambitious and they're more realistic. Interesting, isn't it? Others would say, you know what, they've never had that discussion before, they just loved having the discussion. We had spontaneous scorecards breaking out all over the place during this project, by the way. We had a regional uh, group of four pilots, we had two at least leap off, and later on, they started spontaneously occurring lower down in services, because they just grabbed it and used it. You asked about values and ethics. Look how that, oh, sorry. I've only ever seen this in the strategy maps I do. If other people are doing it, I'm delighted. I first did this when I did that retailer back in 98. I split learning and growth from values. Because values and what we achieve frame what you're trying to put here. <coughs> and if you cascade these, you cascade the values, and that continues to make sure that the ethics and the values that you're trying to create flow through the organisation. That drives learning and growth. It also has the effect of making this less floppy. It actually stabilizes what you put in learning and growth because they're all pinned by values. Okay, I don't worry about the detail. The important thing here, evidence. Some of this is facts, some of this are measures, and some of them may have a target. It's a fact that there are 200 people supported, and we've had a couple of audits, and the satisfaction level is this. Now, this is the overall ambition they set. I'm currently at a six, so I want to be a seven. These are the characteristics. <coughs> and this is the regional director's assessment of where they are this month. Now, it's likely that journey to move from a seven to a nine or a seven to an eight might take six months. They're not going to change that quickly. But what we are interested in, what actions are they doing, which is this bit, and we should see some of that appear in evidence. Evidence, judgment, assessment, action. You see how they fit together. That's not the most beautiful scorecard behind, but they like this because it suited them. You see how the bits fit together. If you are a more analytical, definitely must have evidence, fact-based organisation, all I encourage you to do is take one of these, flick it to the top, pull that down a level, and what you'll have on the you go back and say, strategy map, you put numbers here. They were happy to go with the judgment scores because that's what they wanted to encourage. They wanted to encourage learning. Yeah? You see how it's so simple, that little flick makes a difference between an organisation that's really focused on evidence with some judgment behind and, that, and that an organisation that's trying to encourage learning. Judgment and evidence, and the link between them in this conversational piece, yeah? Because it's the conversation, the quality of the thinking, that gets you in a position where people can learn. They actually had things called learning sets. And what they did is just drop this in, used it to create more of a conversation amongst those learning sets, which is with the RDs. And then you get the discussion and conversation.